Uh, welcome to uh, Southwest Boxing's official second instalment of our sort of weekly or monthly podcast. Um, as we put um, up a poll onto Twitter, um, the Inoue Dunne fight tied with obviously Anthony Joshua's undercard. So we thought we'd start with the Inoue Dunne fight just because obviously the fight is uh, Thursday at 12 o'clock in the UK. And obviously be pretty pointless on a podcast of a fight that's already happened so i'm obviously joined you with kieran uh key um how do you see the fight panning out yeah i think uh first of all i think it's a, it's a great fight to look forward to again and we have definitely been blessed at the moment with these fights so we've got coming along uh quick and fast so i'm certainly looking forward to it as i'm sure most of the boxing will do um i think it's uh it's an interesting one i make um obviously going into it i make now you are in way the favorite yeah um I think his his oh, his power is frightening, you know, for a for a guy of his size, you know, he's you know, we talking we talking in in the the bantamweight division, so we're talking hundred and eighteen pounds. Um, you know, for a guy of his size to carry the power he does yeah. is is definitely frightening. I mean the first time I sort of uh watched him and really took note of him, I suppose, was watching him against uh, Jamie McDonnell. Uh, I remember was... that fight, I think it was out in I think it was out in Japan, uh, McDonnell had uh, travelled out with his team. And I know McDonald gone out there, you know, quite confident. He was on a good spell. Yeah. I think uh, it was Dave Caldwell is in McDonald's corner, wasn't he? I think so. Yeah. Dave Caldwell and I know him and his team were very confident going out there, and it was just it was over within oh, I think oh, a minute and a half. It was a minute and a half first round, and it was just all oh, that you know you could clearly see that that devastating power that uh, in the way carries you know. So that was sort of the first time I um I yeah. sort of took note. Of him. I mean, and what is he? Twenty six. Yeah, he's yeah, twenty yeah, twenty six, eighteen fights, sixteen knockouts, which you know, he's on a little north but is eighty eight percent of a knockout ratio, which is pretty frightening really. Yeah, it is, it's devastating. I it? mean but then, you know, you could say obviously the the more fights the more fights you have, that's gonna go down obviously because you're gonna fight better opposition, but still, I mean, you know, sixteen knockouts, eighteen wins from eighteen fights is pretty scary. Yeah. Um it's quite funny, I now now we're talking about it. Um, I can't think of Jamie's brother. He's got a brother, isn't he? Uh, Jamie and oh, I can't think of his name. Now we've said it. Yeah. Because I remember at the time when when Gavin, Jay, Gavin, Gavin, it is Gavin, Gavin McDonald, McDonald. That's right, yeah. Because I remember reading at the time. Um, but it was after the fight when he got knocked out. Um, they were asking Jamie, "Oh, look, you know, why do you take the fight?" And Jamie McDonald said, "Actually, um, well, he he wasn't." He wasn't too sure, obviously, on New Aid and really heard of him. And it was brother Gavin. He said when he went home, he said, um, I told my brother, oh, I told Gavin I'm fighting a new way. Yeah. And Gavin was like, Oh, right, okay, are you sure about that? And Jamie was like, Oh, yeah, yeah, why? And Gavin said, Oh, <laughs> he's pretty good, mind this boy is. So, so Gavin had done his so homework Gavin on him. Had done his homework. He said, Oh, <laughs> you know, this boy's quite special. And Jamie's like, Oh, right, okay. And then obviously, as we as it panned out, he got knocked out in 90 seconds. So. Oh. Yeah, it was, it was. I remember watching the fight and it was devastating. And I mean, like I said, that was sort of when we first took notice of um, a new way. But if we're looking at sort of who he's fought in... Um, it's sort of mean, mainly the the World Boxing Super Series, yeah, I think. Yeah, I mean, I mean he beat, um, was it Iman Rodriguez? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't really, if I'm being completely honest, I'm not really up on the bantamweight sort of division, no, apart I, from the I big... The the big obvious fighters like obviously McDonald and and uh, McDonald and Dun- and yeah and anyway um yeah, yeah. a man a man Rodriguez, Rodriguez and, and I think that's how we pronounce it if we have uh, pronounced it wrong guys and anybody follows the Panther division do pick us up on it uh so we got yeah a man Rodriguez and also Juan Carlos Payano I think Payano yeah. yeah so those are the two sort of names that he's beat in um the world boxing super, super series. series to get to this point. Um, do you make him favourite as well, Scott? Would you, you know, I mean, he's obviously um, a devastating fighter to be in with. It's sort of similar to the podcast you do with Canelo Kovalev, really. When you look at Canelo, he's the younger man, he's, you know, the the up and coming fighter. Kovalev is obviously fading. I mean, you look at, you know, a new age, he's, what's he, 26, 18 yeah. and 0, the, you know, the number one in the world, you know. Obviously, you can't take away Dene. You know he's had what, 45, 45 fights, but then he's you know he's thirty six now. I mean, there's a lot of I think miles on the clock, isn't it for for Dene? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I I just I just you look at a new way. I don't think he fears anybody. I just think no. he he just goes in there and just does what he's got to do. And I I just think that's 
for the opposing box. I think that's quite frightening to know the guy you're going with doesn't really give doesn't really care yeah. m- much about you. I I yeah. But, I but, think I think it's I think it's gonna I think it's gonna be a fight. I don't think it's gonna be the, you know the Jamie McDonald ninety seconds in and finished. I could be wrong, obviously, but I think it'd be. I like to think it'd be competitive over Yuki. Well, yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I mean, you're talking about um in the way's confidence, but there just now, and I mean, I agree with you on that because I read the other day actually, and the way actually said in an interview that he wants to go down as the best ever in boxing, not just in the division, as the yeah. best ever. So I mean, you know, for a guy of twenty six in the bantamweight division, yeah, already talking about. And making those, you know, claims that he wants to go down as the best ever. I mean, that shows his confidence, doesn't it? Yeah. He's got confidence is in the there, I mean, you know? I, I don't know if you know this, is this part of him, is there any movement of him going up or down? Or is he is he comfortable at the weight? I mean, I, I don't know. I, I think he's very, very comfortable at the weight, isn't he? He's 20. He's not, if he was obviously 21, you would sort of say, oh, is he, because, you know, he's, he's going to get old, he's going to naturally put weight on. But if he's 26, a sort of, in the sort of prime, I would say, of his. Career, and then if we're talking about how confident this guy is and the aims that he's got, I mean, I'm sure his aims will be probably to yeah. Move up, when, and when you think the next weight division was at one twenty two, is only four pound of weight. That's not yeah, it's, it's not a lot, is it? No, it's makeable, and and like you know, the, this guy wants to wants to keep progressing, and he wants to you know, I suppose, dominate as much as he can in boxing. So yeah, I I would make a prediction. I think he would move up. Yeah, definitely. I think he would. I mean, especially when you look at obviously Donaire's obviously fought. Frampton and Frampton's now moved up, isn't he, from this division? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's quite funny. I mean, we were talking about Frampton. What he said about Denae, that um, he sort of, he sort of wouldn't be surprised if Denae won. I don't know what you made yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah. Frampton's made Denae his favourite, didn't he? I mean, was that a bit of tongue in cheek, or was he actually making as a genuine statement? I, th- I think, think he made it. I think it, from what I saw, I think it was on his the TKO podcast he does with uh, Fifty Two Red or Thirty Two Red thing yeah. he does. He said, uh, you know, don't be surprised if Donair wins. So, unless he's just saying it because he's beaten Donair and would like that. Yeah, I mean, that claim to possibly. Fame. I, I mean, I suppose if you've shared the ring with someone, as yeah. Frampton has, like you said, I mean, you know, you've got a pretty good account of him. Yeah. I mean, well, let's look at Donair then. Now we're on to him. I mean, was he 36 years old, uh, 45 fights, um, 40 wins, pretty decent. 40 wins, yeah. Yeah, his knockout percentage, you've got 26 KOs, which is. Fifty-seven percent knockout percentage. I mean, when you think about it, then he's knocked more people out than than the new ways at fights. Yeah, yeah. So I, that's. I, I mean that. That's right. I mean, you, do you know what stands out for me with Dana? I mean, when you look at the resume of fighters he's fought. Yeah. He's shared the ring with some pretty good fighters, like like yeah. obviously you mentioned Frampton. He's been in with uh, Rigondo. He's been in with him. Um, Burnett, obviously. Burnett, yeah. he fought um, in the World Boxing Super Series in that fight. That it's a shame it ended. Obviously. You know, and obviously since Spinett's, you know, retired because of his back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, I mean, Nicholas Walters, obviously, the sort of Lomachenko recently beat him, I think it was about a year and a half ago. I mean, yeah. he's, he's a, was a renowned for being a, you know, a, fa- a fantastic fighter, feared fighter, really. Yeah, anything. yeah, definitely. So, I mean, he's, you know, Rigondo, Frampton, Walters, Burnett. I mean, I don't know what you make about the semi final. I'm pretty, I mean, I mean, Stephen Young, I mean, uh, to be honest, we were talking... We had a cert... Yeah, it's one of them, sorry, yeah. Uh, Stephen don't, Young. Stephen Young, we don't mean to offend do anything like that, but uh, we did have to search you. 70-something in the world, I was quite surprised how we would... Yeah. And, uh, like, again, if if you know, if somebody did drop out, let us know. I mean, are you assuming somebody must have dropped out and he sort of went in... I mean, similar to the Callum Smith, he fought... Yeah. You know the the fight in the semi final was sort of dropped out, and you think in the quarters as well, was it? Yeah, quarters. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, obviously, if somebody drops out, I'm assuming Stephen Young was a replacement. Correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah, if so you're if, seventy if you odd in the world, I think he's seventh in, so he's seventh in America. So yeah, if you do know, guys, it'd be be great if you could let us know because uh, that's one that me and Scott are sort of scratching our heads at a bit. Um. So yeah. So we've we sort of looked at both fighters. Um. Who they've been in with, and you know. Based on experience, obviously the experience not undoubtedly goes with Dane. I mean, the fighters he's yeah. shared the ring with and his age. Um, power is obviously <laughs> well in in a way's favour. Yeah. Frightening, devastating power. So really, then when you put that together, you would say that it a new is mostly going to win by knockout. But yeah. you know, I think uh, maybe by knockout, maybe later into the fight. Yeah, I I think so. Like you said, I don't think this is going to be one like a Jamie McDonough fight where it's going to be a round or two and over. I no. mean, pff, maybe we'll stand corrected. 
his power is that scary maybe that will happen yeah, but, then I think but I just think with Donaire's record he's obviously yeah. he, kn- he knows the way around the, you know, the squared circle isn't he he so. does and I, and I mean it's great You know, it's great to see that in the way from what I've seen in the interviews I've watched a lot of his interviews together you know and things and the press conferences and he, I think in a way does seem to have a lot of respect for him and I, I think he realises that yeah. so maybe that whether that will change the way and the way goes in and approaches it yeah. you know could possibly be um so yeah, so let's let's sum it up then, Scott. What, what I'm gonna go, I'll put mine out first. I'm gonna go with an a new way stoppage. I think he's just on this, but he's, he's a bit like a train, really. Yeah. If I had to describe it, he's just this like wilder, I suppose. A bit, you know, he's yeah. sort of the yeah. wilder, sort of of the banter, mate, just knocking people out. I think it's just people is in front of him. He'll eventually find a way. He'll knock them out, and I I I think he'll do that again in his fight. So I'm gonna go with and uh, now you're in the way. Stop in Donair in the mid rounds. I'm gonna go for okay. Um, I just I'm just looking at the obviously we've got notes there. And he was obviously there's two fights, obviously, he's great team wins 60 knockers. So there's obviously two fights he's had. I don't know where or when in the 18 fights that was that went obviously to points and he won. I don't know. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick my neck out and say I think I think he's gonna win, but I think I think maybe Donair because of his. Because of his sort of you know experience and you know the, the the fights that he's had, I think maybe he'll go the distance and maybe he'll be a maybe he'll be a maybe a clear points victory. Clear points win. Yeah, maybe I you know I'm only going to say that because obviously we said he's going to get knocked out. I don't say yeah. I think I agree. I'm going to go for Donair. I'm going to go for a new way. Quite a wide sort of. I think I knew it will drop him. I think it could be a couple of ten eights in there. Yeah. But I think Dunne is tough enough to go twelve with a new way. I could be wrong. I'm gonna go a new way wide points decision. One one, one one nine, one one one, or something like that. Right, and do you know what? That would, that would actually be interesting to see because I mean, we don't really know a lot about uh, a new way's boxing, I suppose, no. because he's so devastating and powerful. Yeah. I mean, uh, you said you know he's. 18 fights, 16 knockouts. You could even say that if it goes to 10, 11, 12, it does it favour Donair with obviously, yeah. you know. Yeah, I mean, that's something, that, you know, you, you've got to take into consideration. Then. But yeah, we've, you know, so, so summing it up, guys, I've gone for um, a Nayo Anoue uh, winning by knockout in the mid rounds. And Scott has gone for quite a clear and convincing points win for Anoue. Yeah, um, I, I just think that obviously with Donair's uh, track record that it could go the distance. Obviously, I think we'll put out the poll um, first thing in the morning, as we did with the Canelo and Kovler fight, just to get your opinions on how you think the fight's going to go. So yeah, it's on uh, 12 o'clock. I, just, I was trying to look for it. It was 12 o'clock in the afternoon on Sky Sports. So I was looking, I thought it was 12 o'clock in the, mo- in the, you know, in the morning, in the night, but it's not, yeah. it's in the afternoon. So yeah, we'll I'll find out. Via text off you, I would imagine, tomorrow dinner time. Yeah, yeah, keep your phone handy, Scott. It'll <laughs> yeah. be there waiting for you. All so, right. well, cheers, guys, and we'll uh, we'll we'll upload it tonight. This will obviously we'll up later, and uh, yeah, let us let us know what you think. Thanks for listening, guys. Enjoy your fight.